Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue our journey with Nicole and Azan. Let's get to the show. He needs to make a good impression so she knows that, you know, he's serious about this, that he actually cares about me. Oh my God, I'm nervous. Why are you nervous? I'm just nervous, in a way. You know, like the first time I can see her mom, and I swear that I'm scared. Like, <laughs> I don't know what I'm feeling, but I'm serious. <laughs> Because I worry that she won't like me or something. Or like she's not sure that I'm the right person for Nicole. You think? <laughs> you're, you're worried that Nicole's mom might be slightly skeptical of you and your relationship? Yeah, I, th I think your fears are founded. I know that my mom is coming here already thinking a lot of things, like even like negative things. This didn't seem like it was possible that it was going to get turned down. I thought the same thing. You don't think he sabotaged it? God, Mom. I have to ask, honey. No. Like the he's on some no-fly list lady. somewhere? I mean, just to be clear, what the mom just said, either jokingly or not, that Azan is a terrorist because he's Muslim? I mean, just think about what that means. I'm really, really nervous. I'm sure that Nicole's mom, she has questions for me, especially like I've never talked to her. So I worry, you know, I worry that she will spend the time that she's here trying to test me or something. We're gonna take you to the Marrakesh market. That's really cool. Yeah. So far, Azan has been very nice and polite, but when I was back in America, Azan seemed reluctant to get to know us, and that makes me kind of nervous. I don't know, but I think it's reasonable that Azan was a little hesitant to get to know people that were prejudging him quite openly. I'm guessing that Azan heard through Nicole the many, many statements that we've seen. Imagine what all the statements the family has said about Azan, about him being a deadbeat because he doesn't have a job, that he's a terrorist because he's a Muslim, that he's just trying to get her money, he's just trying to get to America that he's a dirty, no good son of a bee. Yeah, these aren't the words they use, but pretty clear messages. So if he got any kind of a vibe along those lines, I think his style is, uh, I think I'm just gonna bow out of that one. It's probably not the best choice, but I think he has reasons to be afraid. Let's just put it that way. Do you have any plans for what you wanna do? For the job. He's gonna get a job. Oh. Nothing specific, just whatever he can find to try and, you know, to keep us steady. Freelance work is required. Yeah, freelance, try. like a like a small job here or there, get a few what he can to help out. I wanna know, where's the money gonna come from? You know, she doesn't have a job, he doesn't have a job. They can't feed themselves, they can't take care of themselves, and they're not gonna be able to take care of me. So, as I've been saying from the beginning, Every single emotion the mom has expressed is rational, good, understandable, uh, in, indicative of a good, caring, loving mother. It's what do we do with those feelings, right? Uh, do we put them to good use or do we put them to bad use? So for the mom, she's worried, clearly, which of course she should be about the money situation between these two people. I think all of us can agree when we watch Nicole and Azan plan for the future, we look at them and we just think, do you know what's, how, do you know how to plan for the future? Because there's money problems now and there's probably money problems in the future and we just don't see a lot of planning that the two of them do. I'm just trying to think what would inspire my confidence in the two of them. Some, you know, Azan saying, oh, you know, freelance work, you know, here and there, jobs here and there. I think, and maybe that'll work out, but I think uh, something that I would hear that would be more inspirational for confidence would be something like, I, you know, I have five different jobs lined up. If, if one of them doesn't work, I've got four others. Each one of them has their pros and cons, but I'm definitely going to, you know, here, here are my, instead, he's just like, oh, well, you know, I'll pick up, I don't know, a job here, that freelance stuff. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure some, it just doesn't look like it's going to work, right? So, of course, the mom is going to be worried. She's thinking, what kind of plan is this? And they, they, they haven't planned well up until this point. And this guy hasn't had a job for years. What's my confidence level? He's going to have a job in the future. Okay, 
So, and she's worried about the family and also about her granddaughter, May. Those, those emotions, those interpretations are all rational. What do we do with that? So one functional, potentially functional way to put that emotion into action is to just communicate those emotions, own those emotions and communicate them. You tell to the young couple who are adults and have full control over their lives, you say something like, so I am not in control of your lives and I don't wanna presume that I am in control of your lives. But I just wanna let you know from the outside, I'm really worried about you, the two of you financially. There's the wedding, there's taking care of May, there's getting the visa, there's, there's so many bills that have to be taken care of. And I just wanna tell you, Azan, you seem like a nice guy, but from what I understand, you haven't had a job the entire time that I've known you. And I don't know if that's just the economy in Morocco or something about you, or you don't have training, or maybe you don't know how to write a good resume. I don't know what the deal is. I, I really just don't know. But I'll tell you, I'm terrified of the future. I'm also worried that when the two of you have financial problems, I'm going to have to bail you out, not because I want to, but because I have to, because if I don't, my granddaughter is going to suffer, and I'm just not going to stand by and watch that happen. And I don't think that's fair to us. Now, maybe the two of you will figure it out, but I'm just, I'm just telling you how I feel. I'm telling you I'm, I'm scared. I, I, I don't have confidence in the two of your ability to figure this out. Not to say that you can't. You seem like capable people, but I'm, I'm just not hearing stuff that's convincing me. Now, you do not have to convince me because you're grown adults. So I'm not in control of your life. My opinion about your situation is I'm an outsider, but I'm just telling you how I feel. Okay, so what does this do to potentially set up for success? Well, one is you are giving respect to the two of them. You're saying you're in control of your life and I believe in you. Maybe I'd sprinkle in a little bit more belief. I believe in you. You seem like you really, you know, something along those lines. What that does is it inspires when, as I've been saying from the beginning, when you treat people, people act the way you treat them. If you treat them like they're 13, they act like they're 13. If, if you treat them like they're 24, they act like they're 24. It just works that way. And we've seen that between uh, Nicole and the mom. When Nicole is around other people, she seems to act, I don't know, I don't know what age I would put her, but a young adult. And then when she's around mom, mom treats her like she's 10 or 13, and Nicole starts to act like she's 10 or 13. So, and it works, it works both ways. Nicole also regresses from my observation while around mom, which pushes the mom into a mom of a 13 year old role. So that, so anyway, my role played way of talking to the kids, owning my feelings might help elevate them to the maturity level you're hoping that they're gonna get. The other thing is, is it keeps the communication lines open. The kids or the, you know, the grown adults are going to appreciate that and are a much less likely to push me out of their life. If I come down hard on them, then they're gonna be afraid to tell me about any kind of failures that they're getting into because they're worried I'm gonna judge them. And as the parent, I wanna be involved. I, I want some open lines of communication. Maybe I could help them out. Maybe I know some skills about resumes or maybe I could actually hook them up with some friends who might be able to give Azan a job, this kind of thing. You know, I want those lines of communication. The other thing is, is I want there to be a bond. I want a good relationship with these two people. I want them to know that I care about them and that I'm not gonna come down on them hard and I'm not, I'm not judging them and that I respect their status as grown adults. Uh, now, it's not a perfect situation. You know, the way that I did it, the way I role played owning my own feelings, it doesn't guarantee that Azan and Nicole are gonna figure financial things out. But the fact is, is that the mom has no control. She has no power over whether or not Azan gets a job. She simply has no power in that realm and she has to recognize that. I don't think she deals with that very well. I think she has a, a complex around powerlessness that causes her to uh, try to overcompensate by, coming, by trying to control things in her way. It's not super controlling, but she comes across like, I, I'm, I'm guessing this conversation is gonna end up where the mom is now talking down to Azan as if Azan is her son 
which is just not the case. Azan is a grown man. He can make his own choices. He can make bad choices, and the mother can say, your choices are making me feel bad, but those are your choices. She can say that, but so anyway, let's watch what happens here. I guess one of my biggest concerns is that knowing that ne right now neither one of you have a job. I is there a plan? I mean, a timeline kind of plan? Well, I know it's uh, we live here like for a year, and we get to do the visa in Morocco. But what happens? What happens if the visa doesn't work? All right, so it's not too bad right now. I, I wish she would have a caveat at the beginning of just like, so I'm just telling you how I feel. But it's up to you, and you don't have to inform me. It's, it's, it's your life. But I'd really like to know this information, you know, coming at it more as an ally, as a friend, as a helper, rather than a police officer, you know, interrogating someone. But Azan seems to be handling it okay, so let's continue watching. Uh, it would suck, because that's, that's what I, I feel like it would be good for both of us. But I wouldn't divorce him, because we can't live there. I don't think I would like it very much if her and May were stuck here in Morocco. I, I would miss May and Nicole an awful lot. As always, when the mom is talking one-on-one -on -one with the producers, she is much more differentiated and much more healthy in her owning her feelings and expressing her feelings. When she's around Nicole, she comes across as controlling and critical and judgmental and dominating and over-functioning. And when she's in front of the camera, she's, she's like, I'm going to, if Nicole and May live in Morocco for a year, I'm going to miss them terribly. That's a wonderful thing. That means you're a great grandma. What a wonderful person that Nicole and May have in their lives. And now she's about to cry, which is just, you know, heartbreaking. And any grandparent would be able to relate to that to just be like huh, i don't have access to, you know to to my daughter and my granddaughter and they're halfway across the world in a land that i i'm not very quite sure of so she's doing great now it's i wish that she could communicate these feelings in this way to azan and nicole i have some hard questions right now yes i do now I know so right back into it, yeah, she says, I have some hard questions. And then Nicole clearly communicated now, meaning I don't want to do this right now. And mom's like, yes, this is going to happen. So just notice that domineering tone. Oh, well, you and Nicole were dating. There were, there were some other girls um, along the way. Don't look at me like that. Be really? patient with me. I, I, I am. Know, it's okay. It's, it's okay. I just, I just want to make sure that it's all done. It's not. I thought we weren't doing all the hard questions. Well, these are the yeah, first chances right. I've had a chance Money. to talk to him. Come on, give me a break here. I want to go see the market. So, from Nicole's standpoint, one of the things she could say in this moment, instead of doing the very common bickering between Nicole and the mom, Nicole could say, Mom, I, I get your feelings, I get you're concerned. But I don't want to have this conversation right now. I get why you want to have it. And, I, I, and I, I, I'm guessing you've been thinking about these questions the whole airplane ride over here. Let's just take it easy today. Let's get to know each other. And, you know, let's, let's talk about this later. And, and maybe you and I can have a side conversation about this conversation that you want to have with Azan. Because I'm not comfortable having this right now. Is that okay, Mom? I understand your feelings. You know, instead of just trying to oppose the mom, which doesn't allow the mom to, to say like, oh, I guess Nicole makes a good point, you know? So uh, I'm kind of worried about this. Now, again, going back to the mom, the mom could say something like, so I don't want to interrogate you. You're grown adults. It's not for me to inter interrogate you. But as the grandmother, I just, I have some questions and I'm worried. I'm worried that things are going to go bad. I'm worried as on that you're going to cheat on her. I'm worried, Nicole, that you're going to make bad choices. But I don't know. Maybe you're going to make wonderful choices. Again, owning your feelings, communicate that. Is it going to fix the problem? Probably not. But there's nothing that the mother can do to fix the problems that she's worried about because she doesn't have any power over those factors. If Azan secretly is using Nicole the mom is not in a position to figure that out. Through these questions, she's not going to somehow elicit information that will get there. 
uh, the mom is not in control of whether or not Azan cheats on Nicole or has been cheating on Nicole. It's just one of those terrible things you just have to realize and accept as a grandparent that you just don't have any power over. And it sucks. And it feels bad. And there are things you can do. And there's a little bit of, you know, communication you can do, a little bit of expression of feeling, a little bit of offering up some advice or some help, but you're still mostly powerless. And to act like you do have power over that is just going to create suffering for everybody, including yourself. Get before it gets dark. I don't really know his true intentions. I mean, I know what he tells Nicole. I know what Nicole says, but there's still some things that I really want to talk to Azen about one-on-one -on -one before I can give my blessing to this. We can talk about it later. But today, I just wanted to try and get to the market, you know, as soon as we can and, and enjoy all of this to sell. All right. So Nicole handled it. Adult-like stance that she, you know, she didn't get to that whiny stance. She stood up and said, yeah, you know, let's not talk about it now. And the mom seems to be respecting that. Now, I want to be clear. There's nothing wrong with the mom saying what she just said, which is that I have some questions for Azan. I want to, I want to interview him as a future family member because I haven't had that chance yet. Uh, there's nothing terribly wrong with that. And different cultures will deal with, deal with that differently. Some cultures are more along those lines of like, the parents have a right to grill the, in, the newly in-law person. Some families aren't that way. I, I just hope that the mom and Azan can handle that in a functional way, and we'll find out. All right, well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. I hope everyone out there is staying safe, and please take care of yourself and take care of other, take care of other people because we all deserve it. We really, really do.